squad music make sure you follow me on all social media platforms at v squad music if you're watching this video please like comment subscribe turn the bell on so you get the notification plan to come at you weekly drop these videos converse inspire motivate um learn a little bit about me follow me on my journey uh let's see where do we want to continue so the last two videos i talked about just the first time you get a reaction um, as an artist, the feeling you get, you know, when somebody makes that face, that's the best face. That's the best reaction you can get as a producer, as an artist, just seeing somebody feeling something that you created, um, you intended for them to respond and react to it, but you didn't know you was going to get the screenched up face. You didn't know you was going to get that. Um, so just continuing the story of my journey, I ended up not finishing that Grambling. I, I knew right then and within the first year, the, uh, college school was just not for me. Uh, not for a lack of discipline, not because I just didn't want to go through the process, but I just knew I didn't necessarily want to obtain this degree uh, in whatever I was majoring at the time. I think I was ma majoring in electronic engineering just because it was something I was good with, good at in high school. But I knew I didn't want to have a career in electronic engineering. I didn't want to be an electrician. Um, and then my minor was in music. But again, as a rapper at that time, I wasn't trying to learn about uh, music uh, scores and notes and, try and how to read music. Uh, terrible on my part had I been thinking just because when you get into production as an artist, um, it's great. You know, I could always uh, play by ear, learn stuff by ear. You know, some of the dopest producers don't know how to read or write music. That's fine. Uh, but for me and some of the things I wanted to do, this would actually play to a benefit had I actually continued and pursued on that. So that was a lesson learned for me. But it was an experience I had to go to, something that I, you know, I went through. I learned, like, yo, maybe that's something you should have, you know, continued and pursued upon. And that maybe would have kept me at Grambling. But again, at that time, you know, um, I'm 18, 19, and I'm just like, yo, you know, this this ain't it for me. I'm going back home. I'm gonna figure out how I can pursue this music, you know. Uh, and I had some things rolling before I had even went out to Grambling. Uh, a part that I skipped uh, on the story previously on the previous two videos was that before going to Gremlin, I had got to a point to where I'm performing at church. Uh, so at this time, I'm a Christian rapper. I forget the name I was going by at that time. It may have been like Chosen uh, or something like that. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm performing at Living Word Fellowship Church off a of TC gesture. Um, I'm fresh out of high school. Uh, the church was built just like right outside the neighborhood, you know, um, in Acres Home that uh, my, my family and I were living in, um, and we weren't active uh, in any church at this point. So my mom sees this church, and she just considered like, "Yo, this is a blessing from God. We're gonna go. We're gonna go attend here." I didn't, like I said, I didn't, I didn't grow up in a church home, um, so this was all new to me. I didn't. I had some experiences going to a Baptist church. My grandmother on my dad's side um, was at a Baptist church, uh, so I, I had experiences there. And anytime we visited family or friends for a function or occasion, it was always a Southern Baptist church. So you know. I was expecting that type of experience. Well, Living Word Fellowship Church is a non-denominational church off of T.C. Jester and Victory. Um, and this is where I would get saved at about age 16, 17, and really started taking my spiritual walk serious with Jesus at this time. So much so that I transitioned from just wanting to be any kind of rapper to wanting to be specifically a Christian rapper. And the reason I wanted to do that was because when I read the Bible, I believed every word to be true. And I knew that we had to be held accountable for our words. I knew from the abundance of the heart, the tongue speaks. Um, and I really just wanted to make sure that anything I said was gonna breathe life, you know? So I didn't wanna just be out here just talking reckless and just having just empty words, you know what I mean? So um, that, was my, that, that was my conviction at the time. My man's that I was rocking with at the time, you know, he was just kind of just like, yo, you know, you could be a Christian and still be a secular artist. You know, you can still guard your heart, guard your words and still be successful and do whatever you want to do. So we would always have like this back and forth, uh, different kind of conversations. We, we still moved as a unit. So that's my main man, Daniel Lawrence uh, and my little brother, Rashad Hudson. We form a group. It's called The Architects. And then we started going by The Standard. I'll tell you all this story later. I'm fast forward and getting to the point. Um, so during this time, we're performing at the youth church. James Simmons is the youth pastor at this time. So the way Living Word works is you got Living Word, the main church off of T.C. Jester and Victory. And then you have the little church off of Little York. And that's where the youth would basically go. We'd ride a van 
over from the big church to the little church or you know your moms would just drop you directly off over there so that's where we first started kind of garnishing our skills we would wrap off of intr instrumentals and just kind of like remake the song so like uh Let's say Bad Boy had uh, I Need a Girl. I need a girl to ride, ride, ride. We would flip that song, remix it, and we call I Need a Christian Girl. So my main man, Frank P, Frank, Frank Perone, we wrote a hook. Um, and we had I Need a Christian Girl, and we would write three verses. I, I would have a verse, my brother would have a verse, and Daniel would have a verse. Um, and, when, and that's how we would do it. You know, we would, we would be the special song uh, at, the, at the youth church. So we started fine-tuning and, and crafting our skill we get to the point where now we're going to start performing at the big stage the main the big church uh so i'm performing at the big church uh regularly um got some funny stories about that later on like we used to bump heads with the program director at that time god rest his soul love him so much man frank whiteside uh because we felt like he was always clipping our legs man clipping our wings like he would tell us you know you can do two songs so we would prepare two songs you know like as an artist when you're a performer and somebody gives you time for a set man you you take it to heart you you put everything into this allotted time slot so if they tell you you got seven minutes i'm gonna fill this whole seven minutes up you know it, it might slightly go over that seven minutes but there ain't gonna be no blanks no gaps no nothing like it's gonna be to a t this song is gonna flow into this song i'm gonna do this here boom 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 so we would do that you know like we would try to uh sneak and like if he said you got two songs you know your average song is about three minutes three minutes 30 seconds so we were like you know hey if you got two songs and that's seven minutes so within that seven minutes you know, we was like yo we can we can do this beat and this verse and then flip it to this and then flip it to that you know and really get a whole performance out of there out of there looking back at it now you know um uh, maybe our heart wasn't in the right place we're, we're more focused on the performance than the ministry um and so uh frank wise like i said god rest his soul like we would uh be walking up to the stage they would call our name to go up to the stage in our heads, we're thinking we got seven minutes or we got two songs or we got three songs, whatever it is. And he would be like, meaning one song, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're only doing one. And I'm like, yo, this will completely discombobulate us. You know, like, again, like you, in your head, you plan this whole thing out. And then as you're walking up, you're like, nah, you know, just, just picture like <laughs> any situation, like a comedian, you know, being thinking that he has a certain amount of time and just being bumped. Or just being told, like, you know, he's in the middle of his set, the light comes on in the back. You know, he thought he had five minutes, boom, 45 seconds into his set, you know, the light comes on. He has to get off the stage because Dave Chappelle's here now and he's being booted off the stage. So this will throw you off, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, we got to give him a show. We got this time. You can't be up there disgruntled, can't be up there mad. You can't get on the mic and, oh, man, you know, disc records and stuff like that. So this was my first experience, my first exposure into um, fine tuning my craft and performance. So this is where I started out, Living Word Fellowship Church. If y'all watching this uh, video, anybody from that era and that time, like if you're watching this, please comment, authenticate what I'm saying. This is all straight, real talk, no filler. Uh, and just really wanna inspire, inspire, encourage, and motivate anybody out there who has aspirations to be a Christian hip hop artist specifically, but any type of artist, man, like you can take these experiences, you can take these things I'm gonna say to you and really just kind of mold them um, into knowledge that's beneficial for you um, and to anyone else uh, that you may know that is trying to do this. So please make sure you share this, make sure you like this, comment, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It helps me out so much. And please turn on the notification bell so you'll know when I drop a new video. I plan to do these weekly, but if it really just starts growing and um, like I said, if something comes to me, I'm just gonna jump right in front of this camera and hit record and just kind of talk about it, man. Like right, right now, there's not really any organization um, or any format to this whole thing. I just really wanna share my experiences while they're fresh on my head. I'm gonna get into the part two um, of this story and my background with Living Word Fellowship and some of the places that it took me. Um, so you can really kind of just know, um, and, and it's just kind of fun to relive these experiences, man. It's your main man, OGV, V Squad Music. Make sure you follow me on all social media platforms at V Squad Music. Peace. Uh, yeah, 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 You move though, don't let a Judas get too close And please don't think it's sweet, I recommend you check your glucose And let up hate from the side, hey, that don't phase me, I'm squad hey, Colgate when I smile, hey, elevate and I ride hey, Every day I make stride, hey, devils change when I guide hey, The marathon continues, better run your race for the pride hey, That's why I keep my head above, hey, instead of showing love hey, You rather hate, you mad, frustrated, jealous just because hey, Yeah, I'm blessed enough, hey, in the presence of hey, Man, you could be showing love, but you still
steady wanna I keep my head above Instead of showing love you rather hate, you mad, frustrated, jealous just because Yeah, I'm blessing up In the presence of Man, you could be showing love But you steady wanna